Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. This is Michael Kupfer with Harvard Business Services. Our webinar today is Creating a Delaware LLC Operating Agreement. We're going to get started in just a minute. Uh, a few quick things to get to before we jump in. Um, what we want to start with, as we always do, is uh, we know we have some folks on the line from all over the world uh, here in the U.S. and plenty of other countries as well. Um, we'd love to have you just take one second, find your chat feature, and just type in and let us know where you're from, whether it's a state here in the U.S. or a country outside the U.S. We'd just like to know uh, who's attending and, and who we're talking to. So go ahead and type that in when you have a second. Uh, in the meantime, I'll just mention a couple of other things. Uh, one being that we, we definitely encourage your questions throughout this presentation. Uh, you can feel free to type in questions as they come to you. Um, Mike, who's going to be presenting, will uh, answer a lot of them as he goes. Anything that he can't get to right away, we'll save until the end, and we'll have a Q&A session then. Um, we have an hour blocked out for this presentation, so uh, we should have plenty of time, I think, We'll be able to move through material pretty quickly and have plenty of time for questions if you have them. Um, so feel free to ask whatever's on your mind. Uh, and we will be recording this webinar uh, and we will be distributing the slides uh, in PDF format. Um, you'll be receiving uh, both of those things, the recording and the slides, in an email tomorrow. Uh, so you can keep an eye out for that. Uh, if you don't get it, please uh, contact us and, and we'll make sure you get what you need. Uh, so I see that we've got some uh, folks ringing in from uh, in the U.S., in Virginia, California, Tennessee, some other places. So um, welcome to everyone, and uh, we hope that you enjoy this presentation. Just a quick note before I turn things over to Mike. I just want to go over who we are. We're Harvard Business Services. We were founded in 1981 in Wilmington, Delaware by Rick Bell. This is a family-owned and operated company. Uh, Mike Bell, who's going to be presenting here, uh, was named our president in January 1st of this year. Uh, our headquarters is now in Lewis, Delaware, which is right on the Atlantic coast. We have formed over 175,000 companies, and we have over 75,000 current clients worldwide. Uh, we're Delaware registered agents and formation specialists. We are a very customer-focused company. You'll see that in the reviews that we have online. We offer free lifetime support. We have low prices. We have a very friendly staff who is always uh, ready, willing, and able to help you with any questions you might have. Uh, importantly, we are not attorneys and we're not accountants. So uh, anything that you hear in this presentation today, please don't take it as legal advice or as accounting advice. Uh, please seek your professionals in those in those fields if you do have uh, questions that we can't answer. And lastly, we are not affiliated with Harvard University despite sharing the Harvard name. So with that being said, I'm going to turn things over to Mike and he's going to start talking to you about the operating agreements. Hello and welcome to today's webinar. Thank you for joining us and taking some time out of your day. Um, we're going to go through a number of different slides about LLC uh, operating agreements and what they mean to uh, your company, um, even if you are just a sole owner or whether you have multiple owners. So um, we're going to get into the, uh, you know, the real details of why it's important to have an oper operating agreement and what it means uh, for the company. Um, in case there's, you know, any disputes or if there's a lawsuit or um, if there's any, uh, you know, deaths in the family or something of that nature. So uh, we're going to dive right into it um, and uh, I'm going to take you guys through a little bit about uh, the LLC um, and just a brief uh, history of it here on this slide. So uh, limited liability companies were first established in the state of Wyoming in 1977. Um, in 1993, Delaware uh, provide, uh, came up with the LLC Act, uh, which was approved by the Internal Revenue Service, the IRS, and became the new gold standard among LLC laws. Uh, so L uh, Delaware is known as the place to incorporate your LLC. There is Wyoming, there is Nevada, there is other states out there um, that are, you know, um, much like Delaware in forming an LLC, but uh, the LLC 
law structure is much more favorable uh, to uh, the owners of the company, um, and this is why uh, over 60% of your Fortune 500 companies, along with the New York Stock Exchange um, and other uh, businesses, inquire about incorporating in Delaware. Uh, so Delaware limited liability companies are extremely flexible and offer, offer a custom internal company agreement, uh, now more commonly referred to as the operating agreement, which both uh, establishes and gover governs the LLC. Um, a lot of people do it verbally. A lot of people, uh, I think that's uh, or a handshake or something of that nature, but a written operating agreement is very important uh, for the company. Uh, the operating agreement uh, can create company structures that fit their unique situation perfectly. Uh, there is no set standards when it comes to uh, determining, you know, who is who in the company and things of that nature. That's all determined internally. Uh, we don't need to know about it enough, neither does the state of Delaware. So uh, the LLC is very flexible um, and it makes it really easy for you to operate your business as you would like. Okay, so there's a number of different business structures uh, for the LLC. Um, the LLC can be uh, structured as a single member LLC, which is individually owned by one person. Um, so there are provisions you can build into a single member LLC operating agreement that protect the member beyond the liability protection outlined in the Delaware Code. Uh, a legally executed LLC operating agreement becomes very important if the member, uh, the sole member of the LLC passes away, um, because then the family uh, then can determine exactly what they're going to do with the, the company and um, just helps eliminate a lot of uh, confusion and frustration. Um, there is also the multi-member LLC. It's either member managed or manager managed. Uh, member manage is m member means owner, manager means they handle day to day operations, um, and multi member means that it's owned by multiple people, much like a, a partnership. Um, in the case of a member manage LLC, the multi member operating agreement typically puts the members themselves in charge of the operation of the LLC, um, and then, as I said before, the managers handle the day to day matter. Matters. Uh, the LLC owner or owners may customize uh, this document to assign specific unique responsibilities to each member or to require members to accept certain rights and responsibilities. Uh, this agreement is often used in family businesses, joint ventures between companies and investment vehicles uh, for groups of investors. Um, if manager managed LLCs, the multi member operating agreement establishes the operation of the company to be led by a single manager who is member selected. Uh, there is also, uh, from the separate from the traditional type of LLC, there is also uh, the series LLC. Uh, the series LLC is um, a not well recognized by a lot of states and by a lot of attorneys, nor the IRS. But it is a entity uh, that is available here in Delaware, um, and it the provisions in Delaware Delaware law allow Delaware LLCs to be divided into separate and distinct sub entities that may each own, control, and manage separate assets, have separate financial records, and be protected from the financial condition of any of the other sub entities or series. There is no limit to the number of sub entities a Delaware LLC. Series LLC may contain. Um, so the Series LLC is a little bit different about, uh, from a traditional LLC, but that's just to give you a uh, little bit of a background about the Series LLC. Uh, there has been a new type of entity that has just been recently established here in the state of Delaware. Um, it's called a registered Series LLC, um, and it is different from the Series um, LLC. Um, one being that you do have to uh, register each individual uh, series under the registered series LLC. Uh, you do have to pay separate franchise tax for each registered series. Uh, so uh, you have to pay separate registered agencies. So there's it, it's a it's 
a lot different. With a series LLC, you're paying one franchise tax for any number of series that you have under those because those are those series are not filed with the state of Delaware. Whereas with a registered series LLC, um, those individual companies underneath are uh, registered with the state of Delaware, have their own separate file numbers, have their own separate incorporation dates, um, and are going to pay their own uh, registered agencies and their own franchise tax here in the state of Delaware. Uh, so more to come on the registered series LLC. I think we'll be able to do a separate um, webinar on that uh, down the line when we get some more information on it um, and can really uh, provide you some more information in detail about it. Uh, we do, it does look like we have one question that uh, came in. Um, in a single member, can you pre establish the transfer to other member or more in a year's time? Uh, so the LLC operating agreement, as I get more into it, it will explain to you um, how everything can be drawn out. The LLC operating agreement has no particular structure to it. So you can determine how you are going to uh, transfer it on down the line, um, having a succession plan if you're a family-owned business um, and things of that nature within the operating agreement. Um, so it is, um, it, it can be drawn up exactly the way you want it um, and doesn't doesn't need to be disclosed to the state of Delaware nor to Harvard Business Services. So we're going to dive more into the operating agreement now. I'm going to tell you about uh, what is an operating agreement. So uh, according to the Delaware Limited Liability Company Act Section 18-101, a limited liability company agreement means any agreement, whether referred to as a limited liability company agreement, operating agreement, or otherwise, written, oral, or implied of the member or members as to the affairs of a limited liability company and the conduct of its business. Uh, typically, the operating agreement is written by the member or members, uh, also known as the owners of the company, and signed before a notary public uh, with a copy of the notarized document provided for each member. Um, in short, it sets forth the fundamental terms of an LLC's owner, operation, and management of the company um, on a daily basis. So it is vitally important to have this operating agreement. So who needs an operating agreement? Well, to answer that question, every LLC should have an operating agreement. Whether you're single owner or multiple owners, you sh every company should have an operating agreement from the very beginning. So what we do as the incorporator is we incorporate the business here in the state of Delaware. You provide us at least one person's name. Um, you can provide us as many as you want, uh, of whom we as the incorporator are releasing the LLC to until the successors are elected internally within the LLC operating agreement. So when you're formally filing your company with us, a lot of people think that they need to give us uh, the names of every single owner and what their percentage of ownership is and who they are in the company, but neither Harvard Business Services nor the state of Delaware needs that information. And that's what allows you to operate your business as you'd like and keep your information uh, confidential here in the state of Delaware. Um, so uh, it's another nice benefit of that the state of Delaware um, offers. So. Uh, the operating agreement, as I said, is the official constitution for the company and should be made internally by the company. Uh, it does have legal standing should any disputes uh, arise within the company. Okay, so uh, I previously just spoke a little bit about this, but I'll go into more detail. Um, is the operating agreement on public record? The operating agreement is not on public record here in the state of Delaware. There are other states that require the operating agreement um, on to be on file with the, with the state. Um, so your information is available for public record. Whereas with the state of Delaware, they do not require the company's LLC operating agreement to be filed or made public uh, with the state of Delaware nor with Harvard Business Services. Uh, the operating agreement can be written in any language, um, and that's the beautiful part about it not having to be 
uh, provided to the state of Delaware in order to harvest business services. So if you are located out of the U.S. and, and uh, you know, you want to put it in your primary language, you can do that and it does not have to be translated to English. All right, so a lot of people always contact us asking us about, uh, you know, what needs to be done when you want to make changes to the ownership of the company or changes in the LLC operating agreement. Um, and because it's not filed with the state of Delaware and not filed, uh, not given to Harvard Business Services, um, all changes are made internally uh, within the LLC operating agreement, agreement among the members of the company. So if there's any changes in members and ownership, change in official responsibilities of one or more members, allocation of profits, losses, and or expenses, um, those are all changes that happen within the LLC or operating agreement. We don't need to know about it. The state doesn't need to know about it. Um, but you do have to have consent of all your members in the company to make those changes. Um, so since that document is not filed publicly, and the updates are also for internal record keeping and do not need to be shared with us um, or with anyone outside of the uh, LLC, um, including the registered agent or the state of Delaware. So uh, it makes it really easy for you to make changes within the operating agreement uh, for your company should anything arise where you need to make changes. A lot of people also ask, well, do I need a, a lawyer or uh, to create an LLC operating agreement? Uh, so there's no official requirement that says that you need um, an attorney to create your LLC operating agreement, but Harvard Business Services does um, often recommend you to speak uh, with an attorney uh, to make sure you get professional uh, legal advice about creating your operating agreement for protection of all members and to prevent uh, uh, potential future conflict. So uh, by doing that, you are you know, protecting everybody in the company and everybody knows what their position is in the company. Everybody knows how the company is structured, who, uh, you know, who provided what as far as funds with the company. So um, speaking to an attorney is a really good, um, a really good thing to do when it comes to a draft and an operating agreement um, to make sure that all your I's are dotted and all your T's are crossed. And I'll, we also get the question of, well, what should I include in my operating agreement? Uh, you can include anything you want in your operating agreement. An operating agreement can be one page. It can be two pages, it can be three pages, it can be a hundred pages if you want it to be. Uh, most operating agreements are less than five pages, I would say. Um, usually some common inclusions are ownership interests, economic rights and distributions, management, fiduciary duties, raising additional capital if you're looking to do that, uh, transfer of interest, or the dissolution of the company. Um, there are a number of other things that you can put in the LLC operating agreement, um, but that's not up to us to determine. That's up to you to determine because that document uh, is an internal document that's not required to be disclosed to us. Okay, so I'm going to give you a few examples here um, of how an LLC operating agreement is typically uh, may be structured with ownership. Um, the ownership in an LLC is shown in percentages versus a corporation, you have shares of stock that show ownership. So because there's no shares of stock in, a in an LLC, uh, you have to have another way to show who owns what in the company, and that is done through percentages. Uh, so as you can see here by this example, John Smith owns 40% of the company. Mary Jones owns 30% and Pat Thomas owns 30%, which equals 100%. Um, initial investment amounts in the business are also commonly included in uh, your LLC operating agreement. Uh, and it is best to use clear language for any details that are not obvious, such as if one of the members does not have voting rights in company decisions. Um, 
based on their, their ownership in the company. So uh, that's just a brief description of how the ownership would be shown in the LLC because you don't have shares of stock, you're showing it through percentages. Uh, another example might be uh, of putting in the LLC operating agreement might be showing the management responsibilities. So if different members or managers um, will be in charge of specific aspects of the business, uh, this is typically included in the operating agreement just so everybody knows whose role is what and who has responsibilities of what certain things. So in this example, you have John Smith. He's in charge of bookkeeping, accounting, and company finances. Mary Jones is included of operations, inventory, and vendor relationships. Uh, and Pat Thomas is included, uh, is, is in charge of sales, marketing, and business development. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Usually not all job categories and functions are listed here. Uh, only those for which one individual is primarily uh, responsible. Uh, again, this, you can write it up however you want to write it up. This is just for uh, an example, um, and it's not required to be drawn up this way. Um, you can draw it up however you would like. Um, all right, so another important aspect of um, a company is who has voting rights and when to hold meetings and things of that nature. Uh, the formal, the corporate formalities such as hold, holding annual meetings and minutes uh, can all be eliminated within an LLC, um, but you can have meetings and, and you can have, uh, you can distinguish who has votes within the company in the LLC operating agreement if you see that's uh, best for uh, your company. Um, so each LLC member shall have the right to call meetings and vote on important matters. Meetings can be called by any member upon reasonable notice, uh, unless otherwise noticed. Noted, all LLC members are given an equal vote on all matters. Votes will be decided based on a simple majority. Uh, matters that will require a unanimous vote would include sale of the company, cancellation of the LLC, adding or removing LLC members. Um, so this is traditional for every operating agreement. Um, and because, you know, these examples that I'm showing um, might be confusing, that's why it's best to uh, uh, speak with an attorney to make sure all those I's are dotted and all those T's are crossed. Even if you're just a single member LLC owner, it's really important important to have the LLC operating agreement on file at all times within the company um, because it just helps eliminate any confusion uh, down the road. So uh, I, I cannot I can't stress it enough, but we have a lot of our clients that that don't. Uh, do the LLC operating agreement or they come back to us and they tell us, well, I have this new member now and I got to get rid of this person, but I, uh, we don't know that information. So, um, that's why you would have the LLC operating agreement on file. All right. So we do offer several different templates that you can use. Uh, they're free. Um, we don't charge anything for you to uh, obtain uh, for us to give you an operating agreement. Again, these are just standard templates uh, that you can customize to your uh, business needs. Um, but if you don't want to use one of our templates, you can obviously um, go online and you can find other templates out there. Um, it just really depends on what you know you're looking for. Um, like I said, there's no set standard for an LLC operating agreement, so. Uh, you're going to find uh, a number of different operating agreements out there that are going to be written differently. Um, so it's it, you know you just have to decide which which one is best for you. But we do offer uh, a single member operating agreement, a multi member or multi managed operating agreement, uh, and we also offer the series LLC operating agreement, uh, which can be found directly on our website. Um, at the link that you see at the bottom of the page, um, you can easily, it's a PDF download and you can just print it right from there. Um, and, uh, you can handwrite it in or you can even, you know, get it out of a PDF format and edit it, uh, yourself. Uh, so it's, it's up to you, um, which operating agreement.
template best works for you, but um, we do have them available on our website. Okay, so I know this was a, a quick presentation with a lot of different information, but I hope uh, it was of value to everyone. Um, again, this uh, webinar is being recorded um, and the slides will be sent to everybody uh, if you uh, missed some of the presentation. Um, but if, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm happy to an help answer any questions that you have. Uh, if I'm not able to answer any of your questions um, be, due to time restraints on the webinar, um, you can always contact our staff um, via phone, email, live chat, or Skype, um, and they will be happy to answer any of your questions that you have. Um, you guys can also reach out to me personally if you would like, um, and I'll be happy to answer your questions as well. So I'm going to turn it back over to uh, uh, Mike, uh, and he'll finish up the presentation, and then I'll come back and answer any questions that you have. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Uh, and, and like he said, I, I hope that you've gotten a lot out of this uh, presentation so far. I know this sometimes can be a confusing topic, and uh, we look forward to answering your questions here in just a minute. I do want to mention again that we offer free lifetime support, um, and you can see on your screen the, the various ways that you can reach us. Uh, we are available by phone and by email. Uh, we have a live chat feature on our website, and uh, we have a Skype account that you can use to contact us as well. Uh, in fact, we are on the verge of adding the WhatsApp feature, um, so that should be available shortly, um, which will give you another way that you can contact us as well. Um, our blog is available. I think some of you probably found this webinar by being subscribed to our blog. Uh, if you're not, if you're not already subscribed, we encourage you to do so. Uh, we like to send out some really great content every week. Uh, we only send one email per week and we don't spam you. It's just the, the items that are coming on our blog. Um, and we absolutely will never sh uh, sell or share the information that you give us, uh, your email address or your name or anything like that. Uh, and with that, uh, we can jump into some questions. Um, one that came in uh, just here at the end, Mike, was uh, for an annual IRS tax declaration, do you have to inform the, uh, do you have to, um, I guess I I'm not totally understanding the question, do you have to inform the operating agreement to inform the members? Um, I'm going to assume that this question is asking if it needs to be updated annually for the IRS to know who the members are. Um, no, so the IRS, uh, Typically within an LLC, uh, the the income is passed through to the members, so the members are typically filing their own uh, individual income tax returns. Um, so often the IRS does not require to know the um, ownership of the LLC. Um, if they do, you know, uh, an audit, then they may want to see your operating agreement and things of that nature. Um, but I wouldn't be able to, to speak on that behalf. Okay. Um, and another question that just came in. Can I... Uh, okay, if, if somebody has an EIN number, uh, can they have employees, I believe is the question. Uh, yeah, so they, think of the federal tax ID number, also known as the employee identification number as the social security number for the business. Uh, it's going to allow you to hire U.S. employees. It's going to allow you to operate lawful business activities here in the U.S. And it's going to allow you to open a U.S. bank account um, along with a number of other things. Um, so you can um, hire as many employees as you would like. Uh, if you are physically located out of the U.S. and you're not doing uh, you're not opening a U.S. bank account or you're not hiring U.S. employees or anything of that nature, then you typically don't need a federal tax ID number. Uh, but if you are looking to hire U.S. employees, you're looking to open a U.S. bank account and you're looking to uh, possibly establish an office location here in the U.S., uh, every company is required to have a federal tax ID number. All right. Uh, next question is, who in the company should have access to the operating agreement? Uh, every, every, all the members uh, or the owners, um, along with any uh, manager um, 
in the company should generally have access to the uh, LLC operating agreement. Um, it's you know it's typically determined internally who has access to it, um, but you generally would have any main people in the company with access to it. Okay. Um, so, Mike, you you mentioned earlier on that. Uh, Every LLC uh, should look into having an operating agreement, including uh, ones that are single-member LLCs. Mm -hmm. Why would a single-member LLC want an operating agreement if it's just for one person? Yeah, so there would be a number of different reasons why you would want that, um, uh, but it mainly it, it's the reason you would have an LLC operating agreement in, it is in case there's a, uh, a death within the company. So uh, they would properly know what to do with the LLC after that person has um, passed away. Um, so that's the reason why you would have uh, an LLC operating agreement on file, even if you are just a single member owner. Um, or it could be for other reasons, uh, you know, if there's a, you know, a divorce or uh, there's a family dispute or something of that nature, um, that would be another reason why you would have an LLC operating agreement. All right, great. And uh, can an LLC also have bylaws like the corporation? Uh, so the bylaws um, are completely uh, only have to do with a, co a corporation. Um, the operating agreement uh, is for the LLC to show the ownership, operations, and management, whereas the bylaws um, are are different um, and are for a corporation because the bylaws. Uh, have stock involved, or the corporations have stock involved and stock transfer and stock transfer ledger and things of that nature. So uh, the bylaws are, are different um, from an LLC. Okay, and we have one more question that came in. Uh, if anyone else has a question, now's the time to get it, otherwise we can uh, wrap it up after this. Do you recommend getting uh, an operating agreement for foreign clients notarized? Uh, if you have multiple members um, on on the within your company, um, it may be best to get it notarized. Um, so that way, it is uh, you know uh, a true and uh, consent form between everybody, and they have the official uh, document. So um, you know it's it's not a requirement, but it may be something that you want to look at. All right, excellent. So I think that's going to wrap us up for today. Uh, this was nice and quick. So if you did have a, an hour blocked out for us, then we're happy to give you back a half hour to uh, take a break, get some lunch, whatever you might need to do. And uh, we thank you for joining us today. Uh, you are welcome to contact us at any time if you have additional questions about operating agreements or anything else that we might be able to help you with. And uh, we will uh, see you next time on our next webinar in September.